Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Worship with Ramon Avenue Christian Church. I'm Dr. Matt, as usual, and uh, welcome to this time of worship, wonder, and a little humor as we're finishing out the last couple weeks of this series on uh, humor in the Bible. Um, some words about today's service, though. We will be taking communion later, so if you have something to eat, something to drink, we'll share, to, share together um, later in the service. Also, for a kind of special presentation today, we have a piece um, from Ripe TV called Prayer of, for Rest, and it seemed appropriate. Um, it's been a lot going on in the world, in just in what's going on, but also it's August, and August is a good month uh, where people take vacation, where there are no major holidays other than my mom's birthday um, coming later in the month. Uh, you know, so it's a good time to be thinking about rest, to think about renewal and so on. So we're going to be um, enjoying that together, it's letting that sink into us. Um, just so you know, the sermon series, we're going to finish out uh, the end of the month with this biblical humor series I'm going through Acts, and then um, we'll turn from that to issues of leadership and governance and looking at examples and teachings and so on from the scriptures around that as we move into this uh, season where we're going to be really intensely thinking about um, the upcoming presidential election in the U.S., but also leadership in, in various parts of the world. And um, I'll say a little more about some of that uh, in the prayer time. So with that, uh, I invite us to move into time of worship uh, by singing together the Lord's Prayer. Lord, you invited all who are weary to come to you for rest. Today, I come to you for that rest. I bring you the heavy burden of work, the tasks that are incomplete, the plans I want to keep thinking through, and the deadlines that are quickly approaching. I'm tempted to believe that my worth is in my accomplishments. Remind me that I am a valued child of God based on the work of Christ. And I'm tempted to believe that my security is in my possessions. Remind me of the greater and truer inheritance that is kept in heaven for me. And on this day of rest, help me to slow down, calm my restless heart and anxious thoughts, 
and on this day of rest, help me to enjoy your creation, not as a tool for my productivity, but as a gift to delight in. And on this day of rest, above all else, help me to be aware of your presence with me. You are the one who created this world and placed me in it. And you are the one who said, it is finished. The work is complete. And you are the one who now invites me into the rest that Christ earned for me. So help me to enter that rest today. Church, as we come to our time of prayer today, um, I'm still a little bit on my post-vacation uh, thing, so I have I've kind of been catching up on the news, but I'm I may have missed a few things. So you know what's going on in the world. A couple of things I will mention um, that we we should keep in our prayers. Um, I did hear that in Thailand, which um, you may recall, Jenny and I went there a couple of years ago. Um, so it's just kind of on my mind. Um, the the more kind of progressive party political party was um, just outlawed basically by their um, by the uh, equivalent of the Supreme Court I think it was um, so yeah just prayers they, they've had a long history of just of uh, rough stuff around governance right they have a king um, they also have merit kind of a military junta that kind of comes in and out and then then a democratically elected government so it's it's just kind of a, a bit of a chaotic mess so um prayers for thailand as they navigate that um also in uh we'll be praying for venezuela as the outcome of the election there has been thrown into doubt um maduro claiming victory but the opponents saying that there was there were irregularities and actually that their guy won um so again prayers for wisdom and discernment and uh, clarity in in all of that um closer to home we have uh in in the presidential race, uh, the tickets are now nailed down because you have Trump uh, has has picked his vice president, uh, J.D. Vance, which I already talked about uh, previously. And then this week, we have Kamala Harris um, choosing Tim Walls, the governor of Minnesota, as her uh, VP. So um, that ticket's set now. And, the, you know, there's been a lot of energy around that. And I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see... Uh, hear more from some of the Jenny's Minnesota relatives, um, what they think of him, but, um, you know, but I've heard a lot of good things. So, um, and I did finally watch the video of him going on the slingshot with his daughter and I, you won't get me on that ride. No siree. Um, we did some other rides on our vacation, but not nothing quite like that. Um, yeah. So, uh, so the, the um, tickets are set now, and um, we're going to be, you know, seeing how that, you know, how that race shapes up. And um, I just want to be praying for wisdom as uh, the Harris Walls ticket kind of gets their feet under themselves. They're just getting this all put together very quickly, and um, I, I did hear they're going to be coming out with an economic uh, speech soon, and. You know, presumably they're going to be rolling out some more policy kind of things, not so much, you know, not just kind of the pep rallies that they've been having so far. So I pray for wisdom as they as they discern the best path, for, path forward for communicating what kind of vision they have for the country and um, what things they would like to see happen. And also the the um, I had the Republican convention a few weeks back now. We will have the Democratic convention coming up. Um, in just over a week. So uh, that's going to be coming as well. Um, it, it's that time of year um, where 
folks are going to be heading back to school. So I'm going to be praying for everybody who's doing that, everybody who's moving to a new grade or to a new level of school. Our oldest is uh, going to be starting college classes on uh, actually tomorrow, <laughs> um, believe it or not. And um, yeah, and, and the others, you know, moving up in grades. So when we pray for everybody who has graduated and is going on to whatever's next, um, to folks who are moving through the system, learning and growing, that they would have a great, wonderful year of growth, of maturity, uh, of learning, and, uh, and also friendship and love and all the things that go along with that. So uh, praying as the kids head back to school. Um, and there's other things going on. Oh, uh, continue prayers for uh, Wes and Chris uh, coming through their, their COVID times. Um, Chris uh, developed a bit of a cough and tested positive again, so they're kind of in another round. So uh, just pray that that will all pass very quickly, that they can get on the mend and back to uh, where they want to be. Um, yeah, and, and you know there are probably plenty of other things you know about of people in your life, um, folks who are grieving, who are celebrating, who are wrestling with life in different ways. So. Let's take it all to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today, for life, for love, for goodness, for joy, for peace. God, we pray for all the places where those are not evident, where there is hatred, let there be love, where there is war, let there be peace, where there is injustice, let there be justice. Um, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we sing and as we pray, that this world would look more and more like your world. That we pray for the people of the Middle East and all the turmoil that's going on in the Holy Land and beyond, with strikes even into Iran and Lebanon and other things escalating there. We pray uh, for the situation in, in Ukraine and now in Russia as the Ukrainian forces have moved into Russia, um, that that would do some good in some way, move this thing forward toward a resolution. Um, God, we pray for your peace. We pray for your justice. We offer ourselves in service of those things. Heal us and bring us comfort and wholeness so that we can serve you as fully as possible. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. The scriptural selection is from Acts 19, 11 through 17. God was doing unusual miracles through Paul, even the small towels and aprons that had touched his skin were taken to the sick, and their diseases were cured, and the evil spirits left them. There were some Jews who traveled around throwing out evil spirits. They tried to use the power of the name of the Lord Jesus against some people with evil spirits. They said, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you. The seven sons of Ziva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. The evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I'm familiar with Paul, but who are you? The person who had an evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all with such force that they ran out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus. Everyone was seized with fear, and they held the name of the Lord Jesus in the highest regards. So we're back again with what funny things can the apostles get up to this time? Yeah, uh, continuing in Acts. So today is Paul. 
Um, I think it's going to be Paul next week too. Maybe it's one of the next weeks. Um, and we we get we're told in this passage right up front that something weird's going on because it says God was doing unusual miracles through Paul. Unusual miracles. Um, it says like even handkerchiefs and aprons that touched his skin were taken to the sick and their diseases were cured and evil spirits left them. Now, I can't I can't read that and not remember something I saw on TV uh, quite a long time ago, but um, it was one of these TV preacher types. I, th I think I remember who, but I don't want to give them the credit, so I'm just not going to mention it. But this guy was wiping his brow, I think, is how I remember it, with this, with a little towel of some kind. And then he took this thing and was like whipping it around. Now, mind you, this is somebody who's, who's usually doing the, you know, people falling back and, you know, being healed and so on. And this person starts doing this and then it just starts whipping people with, or just snapping this thing at people. And I think at one point he takes this jacket and he's like, just kind of slapping people with his jacket and they're falling and slain in the spirit and, and all that. Um, so I can't read this and not think of that image, but uh, I have a feeling it wasn't quite that. But um, Paul here is that God is doing some amazing things through Paul. Okay, some really unusual things. Just the idea that a cloth that touched Paul could heal someone. Like, it's, it's kind of amazing. Although if you think back um, in, in the Old Testament, there was, this, there was this debate about, like, if, a, uh, if something holy was touched by something that was not holy, would the, the profane thing, right, profane the, sac the holy thing, or would the holy thing sanctify the profane thing, or would they just stay the same way? And at one point, I think the, uh, at least one of the prophets said no the the holy thing will make the holy it'll make the profane thing holy as well so it's kind of i think that idea a little bit that you know this cloth touched paul and it specifically mentions that it touches his skin and i'm going I'm to come back to that in a few minutes but um just a very interesting story it's interesting what's going on now this is happening in Ephesus. I didn't have to read the earlier part of this, but the earlier part, he's in Ephesus when all this is happening. And we see that at the end of the passage, it mentions Ephesus. Um, that's significant because apparently in the ancient world, Ephesus was known as a place where um, magicians and sorcerers and so on kind of did their thing. Um, and so there was even a term, uh, Ephesian letters, I think it was, that referred to like sets of like incantations and spells and things. So the name of the city was actually associated with like this sort of magic. And so um, in a way, the idea that God is doing unusual miracles through Paul, is, it kind of makes sense in a sense. If you're trying to get attention in a place where there's so much of this stuff happening, it's got to be a bit unusual. It's got to be a, a kind of a, over the top, right? So, so there's that as background, okay, to what's going on here. And it, so Paul is, is through the hands of Paul, we're getting these really unusual miracles happening. Um, and then it mentions that there were some Jews also who traveled around throwing out evil spirits, right? Um, and, and this was, you know, because Jesus wasn't unique in this. There were other miracle workers, there were other exorcists. Um, but the story of these guys is just hilarious. I love this story. Um, it says at one point, they tried to use the power of the name of the Lord Jesus against some people with evil spirits. So you have these people with evil spirits, they're used, they throw out spirits, that's what they do. But at one point they decide they're gonna try the name of Jesus. And so they say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you, right? And it says specifically that seven sons of Siva, uh, a Jewish high priest, chief priest, was do were doing this. So these seven sons of Siva are doing this, right? They're doing this thing. And they're the ones who say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches. 
Now there, I think, is their first problem, right? They don't say in the name of Jesus, we command, I command you. They say in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. So right there, they're, they're showing that they're a, a step away from the source of power, right? They're a step away from Jesus. They're like, in the name of Jesus, uh, whom Paul preaches, I command you. And I don't know, I just think that's hilarious. Like these guys go in there and they're like trying to throw out the spirit with the power of Jesus. And they're like, you know, the, the Jesus who Paul preaches. And then you get this, this line, which I, mm, chef's kiss. The evil spirit replies, I know Jesus and I'm familiar with Paul, but who are you? Think about that. That's, a, that's kind of an amazing statement, right? This evil spirit, this demon is saying, I know Jesus. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We've had some run-ins. Like we got some history. Yes. Mm, not great. I'm familiar with Paul. Yeah. Heard of the guy. I, I have some idea who you're, who you're talking about there, whom Paul preaches. Yeah, sure. But who are you? Who are you? I don't know you. I don't know you from Adam. What, what, what do I care about you? And so then the person who has the evil spirit, right, the person who is possessed by this evil spirit, then jumps on them, overpowers them all, all seven of them, with such force, they ran out of the house naked and wounded. Wow. That's in the Bible. That's such a weird little story, isn't it? I mean, if you just look at verses like, 13 to 16, right? It's a tiny little, it's like th four verses. And it's, you get the story, these seven sons of this Jewish chief priest go in and they say, um, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, I command you. And they're like, the Spirit's like, well, I know Jesus. I'm familiar with Paul. Who are you? And then just jumps and just, and then they all go running off. Uh, naked and, and, and wounded, right? Um, and, and naked nakedness is, is kind of symbolic of vulnerability. And, but also, if they're attacked by somebody, they may have, you know, had their clothing ripped off as they're trying to get away. Um, that's what happened to the, to the young man at the end of Mark's gospel. When Jesus is arrested, right? This one guy runs off and they grab his garment and he runs off naked um, trying to get away that's basically what's happening here these guys are trying to run away they're not nudists they're they're sons of this chief priest uh, they're they're trying to you know now i mentioned the the context of ephesus because apparently in ephesus um and actually throughout the roman empire there was a, a sort of a respect for jews because of the word because of their use of the word um the fact that they would not say the name of their god intrigued the roman and Gre the greco-roman mind and it's like oh is it because it's a an incantation it's a secret it's a mystery right they were in they were really into that kind of thing and so jews were seen as 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 kind of magical um experts in a sense um, so the fact that these guys get trounced by this by this demon is just it's just kind of hilarious. And then verse seventeen, of course, ends. It, it this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, right? We're in Ephesus, so everybody found out about this, and everyone was seized with fear, and they held the name of the Lord Jesus in highest regard because and these guys tried to use the name of Jesus, and they got their butts handed to them. And literally. Um, so just be careful with Jesus. Like, don't mess with that guy. Now, what in the world do we take from this? Okay, well, that we, we you know, we got to dig into some stuff. So now, miracles themselves, right? So Paul with his cloths, uh, the, the casting out of spirits, and all that. It, in a lot of ways, it is about God claiming power over creation. Okay, and miracles signify this. They're an example of how God is sovereign. God is um, power has power over creation, right? Um, now I went back to 
uh, Willie James Jennings commentary again for this week. And he points out something I found really interesting. He points out that, that miracles are manifested in, uh, he's, he points out three things that are typically connected with these miracles, bodily touch, presence, and relationship. Okay. And if you think about Jesus, Jesus, um, miracles, right? Almost always there was a touch involved. He's there with the person and there's some sort of a, even if it's just, they're just having a conversation before the healing, like there's some um, connection, some kind of relationship there. Um, and even when, uh, like if there's the, what is it? The centurion's son, right? And the centurion's like, you don't even have to come to my house. I know if you command it, it'll happen. And so Jesus does. So there isn't the presence, but it's because of that relationship. And he says, you know, this guy's got more faith than most Jews I know. So, um, and then Jennings points out the interesting element that it's, that it mentions specifically his skin, that the skin of Paul has this salvific resonance, he calls it, so that objects that even touch him become part of this. And he says the life of objects become one with the life of God. So the Godness that all exhibits is, in a sense, transferred to these objects. Um, and he, 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 he really lingers on this point about touch, that touch is part of healing, usually. Um, and it is even in the medical professions in our, in our modern times, right? That a touch is important because he says we are created to be touched repeatedly by God. We should be touched. And when it comes to these seven um, sons of the, the Jewish priest, he says the seven sons of Sceva, what happens with them is that they discern the power of Jesus without the presence of Jesus. They didn't sense the he says they did not sense the ecology of touch and relationship that moved in and through Paul and these disciples, right? They were trying to grab on to, in essence, trying to grab on to technique and words rather than what's behind them. And he goes on to say the danger, the danger for us is to press into technique, to press into Right, the cloth, or press into the touch, or press into the words, um, imagining that that's the key, right? But that what actually is going on, that, that technique can be crucial, it can be vital, right? I mean, if you want, if you got a doctor operating on you, you want them to have some darn good technique, right? But it isn't all about technique. And is it, technique really is just empty unless you're pursuing the Jesus in it, right? Um, he says it signals what is always possible for those who wish to do the work of Jesus without constantly pressing into the life of Jesus. We too may be overcome by evil. So in essence, instead of pressing into Jesus and really getting to know Jesus and being in relationship with Jesus, what these sons of Sceva had done was to press into technique. They had pressed into the words, they pressed into the, the form of the thing without having the substance, right? I'm gonna read that quote again, it signals. So what happened to these sons of Sceva signals what is always possible for those who wish to do the work of Jesus without constantly pressing into the life of Jesus. We too may be overcome by evil, right? It's when we try to do things by doing rather than by being in the flow of God, right? Um, and it's, I mean, I think it probably I could, I could almost end the sermon right there, and I probably will end it in just a minute here. Um, but that I think is there's something really powerful there. 
Um, there's, there's another line, I think it's in the book of James, that talks about those who, who hold to the forms of religion but deny the power thereof, right? Those who, who outwardly do the things, who pray the prayers, who ask the, you know, do the things, do the rituals, kneel and stand, or, you know, whatever it is. People who do the things but don't recognize what's behind it and what's in it and what the power is, right? And, and that is what these guys were missing. They didn't recognize that you can't just go in and say, well, you know, in the name of the Jesus who, who Paul preaches, I command you. And the Spirit is rightfully, in a sense, like, who the heck are you? I know Jesus. Jesus is I'm not messing around with Jesus. I'm familiar with Paul too. Like, you know, Paul comes around. I mean, you know, there's things happening. I, I saw what happened with his handkerchief the other day. You, on the other hand, oh, I don't know you. Get out of here. Next thing you know, they're running out naked and wounded. <laughs> when we hold the form of religion, when we, when we do the things like go to church, we say the prayers, we do the things that we feel like we're supposed to do, but we don't recognize the Jesus in it. That what it's what behind it is a deep relationship, really. You know, um, you know, I, I don't preach because I like to hear myself talk. I do sometimes like to hear myself talk. Sure, I think I have clever ideas sometimes. It's not why I preach, though. I preach because it comes out of that life of Jesus, the relationship I have with God. Um, this is a piece, this is a way of manifesting that in a way, right? So when you do religious things, make sure you're doing them out of that storehouse of relationship, that, that intimacy that you have with God that God wants to have with you. Because God wants us to be doing these things. God wants us to do amazing things. But to do them flowing out of, the, of relationship. So, so may your actions be wholesome and be real. But let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this story. Weird little story, funny little story, but it teaches us so much that it's really coming out of the deep relationship and out of who you are and who we are that we can act in this world. And if we try to act apart from you and without recognizing your power, it's going to fall flat. So help us to act out of what we know and what we sense and what we have experienced of you. Be with us and in us, empowering us in the name of Jesus and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as we prepare to come to Christ's table, um, I want to invite us to sing together, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. It seemed like an appropriate song after talking about this sermon where it's about the power of Jesus' name. But remember, the power comes with presence, comes with relationship. So let's sing, and I will see you at Christ's table, where we will engage in relationship.
Welcome to Christ's Table. In this ordinary time, which is the longest time of the church year, we come to this table expecting the extraordinary. Christ's presence in bread and in cup. And that is indeed what we find. On that night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. And then he took a cup, and again he gave thanks. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri Hagafen Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, the creator of the fruit of the vine. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. And I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The body of Christ broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. Thanks be to God for the gifts of God, for the people of God. of invitation today is uh, you servants of God. And this is, a, as we sing, an opportunity to commit, ourselves, commit ourselves and recommit ourselves to the God who loves us and cares for us and wants to be known in all the world. Uh, just a little side note about this song. Um, I'm never going to be able to sing this without remembering um, the first year I was in seminary, I had a uh, um, roommate, Ron, who was from Australia, from Wagga Wagga, if I recall correctly. So his senior project was a, a video project uh, that began with a piece of this, the beginning of this song, which goes, you are you servants of God, your savior, pro savior proclaim and publish abroad that wonderful name. And it was that word publish in there that caught him. Maybe. And I remember he, he had it like, he servants of God, your savior proclaim and publish, publish, publish. And then it went into the rest of the video and it was about communicating the gospel um, in different media. So I uh, that just stuck with me. So um, yeah, if you're out there somewhere, Ron, God bless you and hope things are going well. And um, let's sing.
as we go into this ordinary world with the extraordinary of power of God within us, may God be above us to watch over us. May God be beneath us to lift us up. May God be ahead of us to lead us. May God be behind us to push us. May God be beside us to walk with us. And may God be within us to love us forever. Amen. Thank you.